In order to see just how unrealistic this claim is, let us consider one creature that evolutionists claim to have developed from a simpler form, the fish. If you examine any species of fish, you will see that in order to swim, all it has to do is wave its tail. Under normal conditions, when the tail is moved in one direction, the head should be pushed in the other direction with equal force. Yet this is not what happens. Fish's bodies have been created in such a way as to eliminate this effect. At the same time during movement, a vertical force acts on the head. All this causes the oscillation of the fish's head in the water to be less than that of its tail. This difference enables the fish to move forward through the water. How quickly the fish moves forward depends on how rapidly its fin moves to the right and left of the axis passing through its backbone. The speed increases as the fin nears the axis and decreases as it moves away. Just how efficient is this system? Observations have revealed that when a fish that's hanging immobile in the water once frightened, is able to move at a very high speed. From a complete rest, some small fish can reach their top speed in as little as one twentieth of a second. They can produce a propulsive force up to four times their own weight. there's an additional point that we mustn't ignore. Fish exhibit this impressive performance in water, whose resistance is higher than that of air. Bearing that in mind, you can see just what a superior performance this is, and some species of fish exhibit it even against the current. Salmon are definitely the most excellent example of this. Salmon reaching the sea can spawn and thus ensure the survival of subsequent generations only by reaching the same river where they were hatched and laying their eggs there. In order to reach their spawning grounds, therefore, salmon have to constantly swim upriver against the current. They also have to overcome waterfalls that stand in their way, and often must leap up to four meters forward and two meters above the water's surface. During these leaps, Salmon leave the water at a speed of 24 kilometers an hour. The impact at the end of such a leap would be fatal to many creatures. But after such falls, salmon continue on their way unharmed. Did they not possess muscular and skeletal systems capable of making such leaps, they would of course be unable to survive. We know that fish do not move forwards only. They cannot survive without being able to move up and down. This problem is overcome with another structure that God created in them. Thanks to the swim bladders in fish's bodies, they are able to sink to the bottom or rise up to the surface. When a fish descends to the depths, the physical effects of the water on it change. It adapts to different conditions at these various depths 
by reducing or increasing the amount of air in its swim bladder. In addition, fish's centers of gravity are generally positioned so as to pass their swim bladders. In this way, in the event that it loses its balance, only very small movements of its fins are needed to restore the fish to its desired position. Most fish are covered in a very resistant skin consisting of an upper and a lower layer. The upper contains glands that secrete mucus, whose slippery or sticky texture helps reduce friction to a minimum as the fish moves through the water. This permits fish to move faster. Moreover, this slippery property makes it harder for predators to hold on to the fish if they seize it, while also protecting it against far tinier predators in the form of infectious microbes and microscopic organisms. In their outer skins, fish also have a keratin-like layer that prevents water entering the body and maintains a stable balance between the pressure inside the fish's body and that in its external environment. Were it not for this layer, water would enter the fish's innards and cause its death. As we have seen, many systems must coexist in order to facilitate fish's movement through water. The structures and functions of these systems are entirely different from and independent of one another. Yet any one is of no use without all the others, and any deficiency will spell death for the animal. For example, the mucus fluid must maintain specific levels of slipperiness and stickiness, and at the same time must also have antimicrobial properties. The fact that all these conditions are met and not in an enormous chemical plant, but in a layer just a few millimeters thick under the fish's skin, is a definite miracle. These features, requiring great knowledge and skill, are just some of the proofs that God has created all these species of fish. God reveals the infinite nature of his might in verses. Everything in the heavens and earth belongs to him. Everything is obedient to him, the originator of the heavens and earth. When he decides on something, he just says to it, Be, and it is.